Today's video is sponsored by Into the AM. It's winning time. Welcome back, everybody, as we are breaking down this second season, talking episode six, titled Beat LA. Now, after winning another NBA title, only to lose the very next year, it is a long way back down the mountaintop as the Lakers have to rebuild their team, and in doing so, they lose a key player in the process. Meanwhile, old relationships are rekindled and others are destroyed. We'll be discussing that and much more in today's spoiler recap, but first, let me know your thoughts on tonight's episode episode, how did you all feel it handled showing the Lakers winning a title and losing all in one episode? Did things feel a little bit rushed to you all? Let me know your thoughts on that, but also share your thoughts on your favorite moments, your least favorite moments. Who was your MVP of the episode? Let's have those discussions in the comments below. With all that being said, we got an episode to break down. Full spoilers ahead. It is the 1982 NBA Finals, and the Lakers win against the 76ers 4-2, and it is time to celebrate. Now, despite all the controversy surrounding the team, I'm talking about Paul Westhead being fired and replaced by Pat Riley, talking about Magic Johnson being paid the highest contract in NBA sports history, and creating some tension on the team while doing so. Regardless of all that controversy, they won. As Magic has a new mindset, which is he wants to stay on top, his goal is consistent seeing a win as we see a picture in his locker with the headline reading when will magic face off against larry bird now i do want to point out because the episode didn't bring this up but magic johnson did win his second finals mvp at the age of 23 i really wish they would have pointed that out because number one it would have had more credibility for him earning that money from dr buzz but also it would have showed larry bird who's really on top so i wish we would have spent a little bit more time on highlighting that magic johnson was the best player on the team during that run but we fast forward a year ahead as it is 1983 as the lakers face off against the 76ers yet again as they will try to recapture winning their championship back-to-back -back seasons and doing so would be the first team to do that in 14 years and the last team to do it well you guess was the 1969 Boston Celtics as Magic team is very confident in beating the 76ers because hell they've done it twice already so they're just confident they're almost like this is a guaranteed win but Pat Riley has to remind them Look, the 76ers want blood. They want revenge. They want to show that they deserve to be here and that they can beat the Lakers. Taking things too lightly and they're celebrating already like they won. Well, spoiler alert, as we cut to game one, Moses Malone was not playing any games in this series. He was the MVP of that season. And we all know that he wants to be the best big man in the NBA during that time. And he was giving it to Kareem as the 76ers take both game one in two and blow out fashion. The 76ers right now are the bigger, faster, and they are the hungrier team right now as they are beating the Lakers 3-0. As we head into game four, the announcers bring up that no team has come back from a 3-0 deficit. After almost sweeping every single round prior to this, the NBA defending champions are swept by the 76ers, who yet again was the team they beat the last two title runs. And remember, they were supposed to beat them. At least that's what they thought in their heads. And speaking of the heads, that losing voice is back in Magic's head. But I also want to take the time to point out because this is probably my biggest criticism with this episode. I know there's only a certain amount of screen time that we can focus on because they're covering so much ground, but I wish they would have focused what went down in that regular season because it was a good season for the Lakers. They were 58 and 24. Magic Johnson was leading the league in assists, but this was also a Moses Malone league during this time because he had just won the regular season MVP the year before. He won the MVP that year and in the NBA Finals. So Moses Malone was that dude during that time but something that i wish they would have definitely shined a light on the nba all-star game was hosted by the lakers that year so i would have loved to have seen maybe one or two scenes with dr bus prepping the nba all-star game and getting all the hype around it that's something i wish we would have spent time on but again going back to shine the light on the league in general 76ers were dominating the nba especially the finals run that playoffs they were 12 and 1 which during that time was the highest winning percentage before the lakers broke that in 2001 and then later, the 2017 Warriors defeated that record. But speaking of defeat, I wish they really would have shined that the Boston Celtics, they were swept that year as well. This is the first time the Celtics had ever been swept in an NBA playoff history. They were swept by the Milwaukee Bucks. I wish they would have maybe shine a little bit of light on that, showing how these two dominant teams, Celtics and Lakers, were swept in the same playoffs. And then last little fun fact for you all, Paul West said he actually coached the Chicago Bulls during that year. 
As we cut to Dr. Buzz telling Jeannie that Red called this happening, that this wasn't going to last. And I found this next line to be very strange. As we see Jeannie tells him that he can always fall back on real estate. I'm sorry, am I missing something? LA Lakers just won two of the last three NBA championships. And all of a sudden, it's like the end of a dynasty, the end of a run. I think that was a little bit more of a dramatic element of the TV show to kind of show them at the down and outs. Like, I get it. You lose a finals, you probably feel like you got to start from square one. But the reality is you're still one of the best teams in the NBA. So I just thought that was like a very odd thing for Jeannie to save to Dr. Buss during that time. But as I digress, we cut to seeing Red talking to Larry Bird, who was coming off of an injury, about how the Lakers are being over and it's their time to shine. And I love this line by Larry Bird as he hopes that that isn't the case because he wants his shot at the Lakers. But more importantly, he wants his shot at Magic Johnson. We cut to this meeting with Dr. Buss and his management as he's rightfully pissed that the team wasn't able to capture at least one game during that final finals laws as we have the newly appointed GM a year ago, Jerry West, blaming himself for not drafting properly as he did end up drafting one of the greatest players of all time and a future Hall of Famer in James Worthy, who unfortunately they're blaming the injury of him breaking his leg a couple days before the playoffs. And number one, there's a couple crazy things that went on. The fact that the NBA winning team, the champions, had the number one draft pick at their disposal, it just goes to show you that the NBA has come a long way, that the winning team do not have that luxury nowadays so that is just crazy to me but the plan is to make some major changes to the roster and they don't want to waste another year of their lives as we learn that kareem hasn't been picked up as a free agent after three months and no team seems to be really interested in picking him up in the offseason right now the knicks are his number one landing spot but they're not really interested in the cap right now agents suggest that maybe it's because of the lack of personality with the media and the fans be fair to kareem he wasn't like the most, he wasn't the face of the NBA during that time, but he did have some clout. He was very famous. Not only was he one of the dominant players in the NBA, but he also was outside of the NBA. He was in films, I think of 1972's Game of Death starring Bruce Lee and Kareem, but he also was in 1980's Airplane. So I don't know what else the media wanted from him. Again, I know he wasn't like the spokesman of the NBA or whatnot, but it just goes to show you that the league is a business. It's not all about what you do on the court. It's also about about what you do off the court. Cut to trouble in paradise with the Buzz family as Honey's been out all night and appears to be back to her old crowd of friends, getting high, getting drunk, and back to her old ways as the whole work over family conversation is brought up. And listen, I'm just going to make it brief because you all know how I feel about these type of scenes. I don't know where this is coming from. This kind of feels like it's coming out of left field, this whole kind of animosity in the relationship. Because if you just look at this episode, narratively speaking, the last time we saw Honey and Buzz, they were at the game holding hands, looking and as happy as to be. In the next scene, we see them have this argument. So to me, again, this just kind of shows, this is a perfect example to me that the Buzz family drama is the least compelling plot for me. And every time we cut to them, it just seems that they're kind of forcing the issue. And we'll talk a little bit more about Honey and what she did to Dr. Buzz a little bit later. But let me know what you all thought about that. Meanwhile, we see Magic still shooting his shot with Cookie. He's trying to get back with her as she is headed to San Diego for a new job opportunity seeing one of the many things I love about this show, which is the behind the scenes of how they were able to acquire players, trading players, signing players. We see that Jerry West is up to good stuff, trying to rebuild this roster to get back to the championship. As we have names being thrown out there, like Byron Scott, who ended up being a very key player for the Showtime Lakers. They're also mentioning the terrible Donald Sterling, who is the new owner of the San Diego Clippers during the time. The Clippers were trying to be like this bootleg dollar store version of the Lakers rebuilding their team but they do have some players that the Lakers are interested in and if they want to pull the trigger on some of these players that means they have to trade away one of their key players and it's right now between Norm and Wilkes. As we see a conversation between Jerry West and Magic Johnson talking about it's time to make a decision and if he's comfortable with the decision, which is trading away a key player in Norm, as he realizes that it takes these type of tough decisions to win more games, to be number one. I'm not gonna lie, I really do wish that we had more moments between Jerry West because he's one of my favorite characters on this show, but I love the back and forth and kind of the understandings between these two characters, Jerry West and Magic. Something I noticed that I wish we did get more scenes between these two great characters. As Norm is living his best life, not knowing what's about to come to him, as he is out dancing, training for Soul Train with legendary actress, dancer, choreographer, singer, songwriter, director, Emmy and Tony winner, and future wife of Mr. Norm, Debbie Allen. 
see the players watching Norm dancing with Debbie. They feel like he's distracted right now. He should be putting more time on the court to get back to winning. Now, I have a question for you all. As the team questions Norm's commitment with the team, we have this shot of Magic looking at Norm. Now, the question I have, was that a look knowing that Norm was about to be traded and he kind of felt bad about that? Or do you all think that was a look of jealousy, meaning that he wished that he had a woman like Norm has in his life right now? Or do you all think it's a combination of both? What do you think of that look from Magic? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Speaking of magic, we see he's pulling a magic trick right now as we see a scene with Cookie on her interview which wasn't going that well and it's not due to her, it's just because those guys were being kind of racist from being honest with you all talking about they're not looking for just one person in an urban area. We have magic showing up and out of nowhere he's talking her up and the interview starting to go well. He's doing a good job of just really number one showing like, oh, she works with magic and she's in a relationship so it kind of plays to her hand. If I'm being honest, I thought she was going to be a little bit pissed at magic during that point but i'm glad they didn't have like that moment she just was appreciative of what he just did because it shows as we see in the scene he's showing interest in her dreams and not putting himself first as he learns that Cookie is single and it's time for Magic to make his best move off the court as he just wants to get one more chance with her and she gives it to him as we see him making an announcement to all the women in the conference that he's no longer a ladies man. But being honest with you all, I found the relationship between Cookie and Magic to be way more compelling than Dr. Buss and Honey. Number one, I just think they have better chemistry but also to be honest they have more meaningful scenes that makes this type of moment feel like it's earned. Let me know what you all think about that. But we have head over to Norm who's celebrating his birthday and he learns that he's been traded on his B-Day as he recalls his first time putting on a Lakers jersey and he never thought it would end. As he heads to his birthday to celebrate with his friends, he says goodbye to his teammates, but he also says goodbye to management. I really kind of like the scene between Norm and Jerry West who Norm claims that Jerry West was not a fan of him, but he appreciates him being a man and, you know, just at least faking that he's upset that Norm is leaving. As we see, Norm makes a birthday birthday cheer as he tells he promised to bust the Lakers ass next time he sees them. Fast forward to a perfect segue, we see that ass whooping taking place. As Norm and the Clippers beat the Lakers 110 and 106, we see the media douse the Lakers and their new look team. Speaking of new look, are you all looking for some fresh new gear? Well look no further, let's hear a word for the sponsor of today's video, Into the AM. Today's video is sponsored by Into the AM. Into the AM is a clothing company with a variety of amazing products such as t-shirts, hoodies, jackets, shorts and underwear, headwear and much more. Their t-shirts have unique designs, they're incredibly soft and extremely comfortable and they're made to last. But the best part is you can get 10% off by using my discount code MOVIEFILES when you're selecting your new gear which you can find that code in the description below. So shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Into the AM. If you all are looking for some fresh new gear, check out the link in the description of this video. And if you all see something you like, use my discount code. You won't be disappointed because they have some really awesome stuff that I personally own. And I want to, again, give a shout out to Into the AM. Back to the breakdown, separating the difference between need versus want. We have a conversation with Pat and his wife who just sees the team as just being on the defense right now and not on the offense. They've removed their foot from the gas pedal because they've seen the top of the mountaintop and right now they seem to be very content as Pat points out how the players have lost their hunger because they needed to win they wanted to win and he feels like he's lost some things to say to motivate the team now speaking of need and want we see magic makes a very big move off the court which is asking for the hand of marriage from cookie now I'm not gonna lie I really enjoyed that moment because we've seen over the last two seasons that this is a relationship that means a lot to both characters and I am really looking forward to seeing this relationship because there's a lot of highs with Magic and Cookie, but there's also a lot of lows. So I don't think we're going to focus too much on that in the finale next week, but fingers crossed we get another season to really explore that relationship. As one marriage is about to begin, we see another one about to end. As we have a scene between Honey, who just found out that Dr. Buss was still married to his ex-wife Joanne, who he forgot to file divorce papers. He says he forgot, and he blames it on being busy with the team and trying to make them win a championship. He Honey's leaving him. 
him. Now, I personally believe that this is probably the last time we're going to see Honey. For those at home that are curious, I don't think Honey's a real character. I think she's fictionalized for the show purposes. Because what I was able to find, I believe she's an amalgamation of a couple different women that was in Dr. Buss's real life. Someone went by the name of Veronica, who back in 1972 was allegedly married to Dr. Buss while he was married to Joanne. So I think it's a little bit of her. And then later on, like close to the 80s, he dated a playboy by the name of Debbie. So I think, again, Honey is an amalgamation of those two characters. But I hope this is the last time we see Honey because, again, as I mentioned before, I'm not a fan of that plot of Jeannie, Honey, and Buzz. So I'm glad that this is moving forward. I mean, we have one more scene that we'll talk about with her a little bit later. But let me know how you think that that relationship ended. Did it work? Did it not work? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. No time for Dr. Buzz to cry because he gets a phone call and he finds out some tragic news that Kareem, his cap, house catches on fire. Now we cut to that scene. We see that he's lost everything in the fire and he almost lost his family in the process. This seems to be a moment of reflection for Cap as he has to live in the moment and appreciate what he has before it's too late and before it's gone. As we wrap up the episode with seeing Cap wanting and needing to play after he lost everything in the fire and he gets love from the fans and he sits down with the team to have a conversation. This conversation, he demands the highest from his teammates and he wants to play for each other. He wants them to root for each other, but he also wants to give it back to the fans, which is a great callback to earlier in the episode when he had that conversation with his agent. This is his way to giving back to the fans, which is giving them the highest level possible for commitment to the game but also winning the game I thought that was a very excellent moment for Kareem who if we're being honest Kareem had a lot more to do in season one and season two was definitely more focused on magic but I love when we get these moments of reflection showing who Kareem was and showing that he wanted to win by any means necessary as the mindset is be the hunter or the hunted, we see Magic is watching Bird, Bird is watching Magic, and we also get a moment where Kareem still has a lot of gas less than a tank as he breaks the record from Wilt, which was the all-time scoring leader of the NBA history, which we all know was a record that was held for over 40 years, which was recently broken by LeBron James. Now for those just kind of curious about what happened during the regular season before we get into this playoff run, Larry Bird was the season MVP, David Stern officially became the NBA commissioner and the Lakers went 54-28 that year. As we wrap things up with the Lakers heading into the 1984 playoffs, we see that this team is handling their business, taking care of the Western Conference. Meanwhile, Boston Celtics are trying to do the same thing out on the East Coast as everybody wants the moment we've been waiting for, which is the Boston Celtics versus the LA Lakers in the NBA Finals. As the Celtics are winning their series 3-1, we see Dr. Buss is listening to this game, but he gets a knock on the door. He gets served with paperwork showing that Honey wants $100 million for him. I guess Honey wasn't that sweet. Again, I think this is the last of her, but we'll see what happens in next week's finale. We see the Lakers are listening to the Boston game. Dr. Buzz, who's pissed right now after having that $100 million serving to him, he wants to talk to them before they get into their game, and he wants to put the normal routine aside, and he just wants to beat some ass. And he is calling this a one-sided rivalry, which was very true. Boston and the Lakers, it was a very boston heavy the winning time. There wasn't a lot of wins for the Lakers quite yet between the two different teams. Meanwhile, I love this scene so much. We have Red saying almost the exact same thing about the Lakers, and we get the moment that I love hearing and never gets old. Beat LA. Fuck Boston. Beat LA. Fuck Boston. Beat LA. Boston. The monologues from both actors absolutely gave me chill as Red is talking to the Boston Celtics, Bus is talking to the Lakers, and we are setting up the rivalry, the matchup that everyone's been waiting for, know what's about to happen, the matchup between the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers. It's considered to be one of, if not the greatest finals of all time. So overall, I thought this was a great follow-up episode from last week's episode, which a lot of us, like myself, believe was probably the best episode of the series last week. But like I had said earlier, I do wish we would have spent a little bit more time with some of those regular season moments that I pointed out, especially during the season that they lost to the Sixers, but also getting back to the finals and just a little nuanced things. But like I said, I understand that this show has a lot of ground they're covering and they have to be very 
picky choosy what they want to have as far as their main story. So I can kind of understand and compromise with some of the stuff that we didn't get. But the MVP for me in this episode has to be Kareem. Him having his moment of reflection, him recapturing his dominance and his passion to win again for not only his family, himself, his teammates, but also for the fans. I really enjoyed that moment. And again, I cannot get enough of Jerry West. I feel like we got a lot of more Jerry West this episode. And to me, that's a W. So I am very pleased with this episode. Episode. I am also excited, but also sad that next week is a finale, which I'm really looking forward to seeing that matchup of the Lakers and the Boston Celtics. But enough from me. Now it's time for you all to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What worked? What didn't work? Who was your MVP? And what do you all hope to see at next week's finale? Before we wrap this thing up, just again, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of the video, Into the AM. You can find the link to their website. And if you see something you like, which you probably will, because they got some pretty awesome awesome stuff, don't forget to use my discount code, which can be found in the description of this video. For all those that like my other content, check out my other reviews that I did for the new series on Apple TV Plus, Changeling, the first three episodes I did a review on. For my movie fans, check out my review for The Nun 2 and A Haunting in Venice. You all are great. Hope you're staying safe. Like I said, if you all appreciate today's video, make sure to like, share, leave your thoughts in the comments, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any of my future content. Thank you again for watching today's video, and I'll catch you all on the next breakdown.